Monday morning, it's raining. It's a day off and it's day one of 36 days of type. Hello everyone, welcome to another studio vlog. I know it's been a very long time, but I've been extremely busy this year and I've only just found the time to film some of my workflow. But yeah, if you're new to this channel, my name is Aurelie and I'm a lettering artist from the Gold Coast in Australia. And in today's studio vlog, I'll be showing you my process for 36 days of type this year. And then I'll be sharing with you as well how I created my new textile lettering toolkit for Procreate. Finally, I will be showing you exactly what piece of equipment I use to film my process video on my iPad. So make sure you watch till the end. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it was worth the wait and yeah, enjoy. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know that this year I participated in the 36 Days of Type Challenge. Every year, 36 Days of Type invites designers, illustrators and graphic artists to express their own interpretation of the letters and numbers of the alphabet. Each day you are prompted to design a letter or a number in order to explore typography and its endless visual possibilities. This is the second time I participate in this project and for this edition, I decided to experiment with new textures. This year, I've also only used one color palette made with pink, purple, yellow and brown. All of my letters were created in Procreate and I chose to alternate light and dark background each day. I had planned each texture I was going to experiment with for each letter of the alphabet ahead of time. And every day I looked up references and drew rough sketches for each letter before moving on to Procreate. Let's be honest, this was a lot of work, but I absolutely love participating in design challenges because they actually help you do more work. Even though this may sound contradictory, having restrictions actually makes you more creative. When you have a system and a process in place, it makes it a lot easier to just know what to do and tick boxes. Take the guesswork out of having to find inspiration and you will be way more productive. You want to have a checklist and a step-by-step -step process for what you're creating because the clearer and the more organized you can be with your process, the more creative space you will actually have. And the fact that I was accountable and I had to post my letters every day is also what made it happen. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to design any numbers this year, but I'm so happy with how the letters came out. So make sure to check them out in full size on my website and let me know which one was your favorite. All I have to do is take a high quality picture, um, take it from up close, make it a pattern, and that's how you make a brush. So literally you can take pictures of absolutely any texture. This is my couch. I think it's perfect for like a velvety cotton cotton texture. I've also used this leather for the leather texture. And of course I'm using actual denim to create the denim texture effect. And I was gonna use this to create the faux fur texture, but instead I'm gonna be using him. Look at this, perfect fur. I have to include some rhinestone in my toolkit so all I have to do pretty much is um, take nice photos of those rhinestone and then turn them into brushes.
are. We've got four swatches in total, uh, which means that we have 12 color palette because one line equals one color palette. And I am pretty happy with how they came out. I think they're really cute. Uh, so you've got casual spring, lazy Sunday, warm fall and haute couture. I'm so excited to see what you guys come up with. I think this one will be perfect for anything with like um, flowery embroidery. This would be nice for something a bit more retro. This one would be perfect for some kind of warm, wintery, cozy themed artwork. And this one, haute couture, would be perfect for anything like leather or denim or anything a bit more classic, I suppose. So yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. This is what the final samples look like and by far is one of my favorite. And this is what the final color palettes look like. Of course guys, all of my brushes are available on my website. They're also available on websites like Creative Market and Design Cuts. So I'm going to show you exactly where I film my videos. I actually film them right there. You can see my iPad is here. So the reason why I'm filming in this room is because first of all, there's carpet on the floor, which means it's a lot less echoey. Also, I'm able to close this window, which means I have the same type of light during the day or during the night because um, I use these two lights. Really good for filming courses and things like that. So as you can see here, I'm using this desk mount. I'm gonna show you a little bit closer. So this desk mount is actually supposed to hold a monitor. And what I've done is change this part at the end and change it to a tripod ball mount for cameras. So I actually bought this part separately and that's meant to be used on a tripod, but instead I fixed it right there on this desk mount. And the reason why I bought this is because it's very easy to adjust. It's very simple to move it up and down and you can move this handle to the left or to the right and it works super easily. It's very solid, very easy to adjust. And same with this part, it's super easy to change. So I'm gonna show you quickly. So you can just move this out. And this is something else that I bought separately as well. And this is just a case to hold a phone. Um, and this part actually comes with this ball mount and that's where you can put your camera. So I use this um, setup to record with my phone or with this camera here. And this is the camera I'm using to film my courses. It's a Canon M50. It works really well for vlogging and filming uh, 4K videos and I have added this little microphone. Sometimes I would use this tripod as well to film close-ups or to walk around uh, the studio and film while I'm walking. And I'm also using this iPad case, uh, which is great because uh, you can still have your Apple Pencil onto the side and it will keep charging. And when you travel, you can also put it here and it won't go anywhere. As you can see, I'm also using colored paper in the background. I have lots of different ones. It's just regular craft paper from the craft shop. Uh, I have pink, purple, um, yellow, blue, and this kind of nude color. I change it quite often because it kind of gets damaged because um, a lot of the time I use blue tack to kind of set the iPad in place so that it doesn't move when I record my process videos. I'm also using masking tape to keep it in place and it's great uh, when you're filming you know exactly which area you should be recording. So this is generally how I would set up my phone uh, to film my iPad. And of course, guys, I will make sure to link everything in the description down below. So every item that I bought on Amazon. And if you have any questions, anything that I've missed or anything that you would like to know about a particular piece of equipment, feel free to let me know in the comments. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this very quick last minute studio vlog. I promise you guys that I will try and make more tutorials, try and make more studio vlog. Um, life has been pretty hectic. It was my goal for 2021 to make a lot more videos, but 
yeah i suppose i have done a lot of other things but it's already nearly halfway through 2021 so i better start making more videos of course if you have any questions anything you'd like to know feel free to let me know in the comments and i'll see you guys in my next vlog bye